Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Ingram. This is The Ingram Angle, back in Washington tonight. Trump thumps, Biden bumps. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, just for fun, I went back to read what some of the experts were saying in the weeks and months after the 2020 election. A Politico headline blared, the day that Trump broke the GOP. Well, it predicted a reckoning over Trumpism. And then, Trump has finally finished, the New York Times declared triumphantly. But, okay, surely all those experienced Beltway pundits got it right, though. The demise of Trump, and there will be a demise. You got it from me here. The trial alone, even without a conviction, will be enough to end Donald Trump's political career. At the moment, he's very serious. And with President Trump, you always have to sort of put an asterisk on statements like that because he does change right. his mind. It doesn't mean he'll still be here as serious in, in, in two years. And last night, after Trump won every Super Tuesday contest, except in the socialist-loving open primary state of Vermont, they still couldn't get their minds wrapped around it all. It doesn't matter, right? Like, this is Trump's party. It's a cult. It's almost like a cult-like um, following that we're seeing, um, and it should trouble us for the sake of our democracy. Sake of our democracy. But what most of these people have never understood is that this really isn't about Trump. And he himself often says he's just a vessel for the hardworking Americans who feel forgotten and even tormented by the corrupt D.C. Uniparty. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great, great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you, the American people. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you, and I'm just standing in their way. It's not about a man, it's a movement. And the claims that MAGA is just a cult of personality are now and always have been fatuous. It totally misses the mark. Trump's getting stronger now because his positions are getting more popular. Now, back in 2016, many were skeptical about building a border wall or decoupling from China or were doubting that we should stop fighting and funding so many unnecessary wars. But now, after three years of Biden and remembering how things were under Trump, well, those views of his just seem more common sense to more people. One would think that the idea of putting America first, you think that would be fairly non-controversial? You know, put your own oxygen mask on before you try to save others? But no, most in the swamp just think that's selfish to put America first. But the truth is, Trump's been right on the issues over and over again, and it's paying off politically. Also, his prediction about what would happen to America under Biden, it was spot on. If Biden wins, your borders are gone, which means your health care is gone, the middle class is gone, your safety is gone, your country is gone. That's what's going to happen. Only in Washington would they consider a president's economic record a success when, from January 2021 to December 2023, real wages declined 2 percent. Unbelievable. Now, as much as Team Biden tries to spin this, you can't spin it. His record is horrendous. The CBS YouGov poll that just came out tells the tale. 65 percent said the Trump economy was good. Only 39% say the same about Biden's economy. Biden's bumps along, well, he bumps along because the plutocrats are opening their wallets big time to fund his campaign. The last thing they want is Trump, who will get tougher on China and shut down their supply of cheap migrant labor flooding across the border. Rich people don't like that. Which brings me to what's next for Biden's puppeteers. Because as big as Trump's wins were last night and as bad as Biden's record is, Biden's people do have a plan to win. First, they're going to use their money advantage to drown Trump in ads, in voter outreach, returning in mail-in ballots, and ballot harvesting where legal. Second, they're going to hope for a conviction in one of those ridiculous criminal cases, thinking that that's going to turn off enough voters to hurt Trump. Third, they're going to play endless loops of January 6, the so-called freedom agenda, and argue that Trump will be the agent of anti-democratic chaos. And fourth, they're going to play the race card, as usual, including arguing that requiring voter ID is somehow racist. Fifth, 
You can expect even more mail-in ballots than the last election, part of the overall campaign. And sixth, they're going to have Biden and his surrogates try to get under Trump's skin with various insults and maybe draw a nasty foul that they hope turns off suburban moms. Seventh, finally, there's always the unknown, the deep state. They know Trump is determined to bring change to how the intelligence community operates, and they do not want that to happen. Now, a lot of you are asking about Nikki Haley today. Well, she made herself irrelevant, in my view. She dropped out about a month too late, and now she's getting closer and closer to Liz Cheney land. She was being praised all day long on CNN and MSNBC by Democrat strategists. She might have had a little bit leverage shortly after Iowa, but most of her voters we know are never Trumpers or Democrats or leftists who will never, ever vote for Trump. Is it, is it likely that Haley's supporters out there could eventually wind up voting for Biden? Absolutely. And look, she has appealed to cons more moderate Republicans and certainly the independent voters. She was appealing to the independent mm -hmm. voters and Democrats who might vote for Joe Biden. She appealed to them. So the fact that those are the voters that may have come out for her, they could potentially go to Biden. OK, that's absolutely false. OK, this is the spin that the media is putting out there. She has no power over her supporters. She has no leverage to use those voters to try to pressure Trump in one direction or another on any issue. But that's a spin you heard all day long. Now, even McConnell and Thune, the ultimate GOP establishment figures in the Senate, they had to wake up to reality and endorse Trump. So where does that leave Nikki Haley in no man's land or no woman's land? And all you need to know is that Haley's only victories, again, were in the socialist-loving Vermont and in the swamp. So this is going to be fascinating. Trump, is he the ultimate comeback kid versus Biden, the octogenarian? It's all up for grabs. The future of America, Trump versus Biden. And by now, we all know what that means. Trump has nailed it on every major issue now before us, from the economy to immigration to military intervention. And reelecting Biden will mean no more borders, more debt, lower wages, and more racial division. Of course, more radicals telling us just to hate America and more prosecutions of Christians and other social conservatives. And of course, yeah, you can bet more wars. For too long, we've been governed by people who don't really care what we think and don't have our best interests at heart. We can and should change this in November. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.